Hello and welcome. I am Professor Raman and this module is titled United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia and the United Nations Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals. The ICTR in Tanzania and The Hague. In the immediate aftermath of the Rwandan genocide in 1994, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, known as the United Nations ICTR, was set up to try those most responsible for the deaths of about 10 million Hutus and Tutsis in the country Rwanda. While there is an ICTR office in Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, it is primarily situated in Arusha, Tanzania. The Hague in the Netherlands houses its appeals chamber. It is the first ever international law tribunal set up to bring violations of human rights in the context of the Rwandan genocide. A little background to the Rwandan genocide. The most eventful trigger that sparked the hard achieved truce by way of the Arusha Accords was the shooting down of a plane that carried the then president of Rwanda, Juvenal Habyarimana, and the president of Burundi, Cyprian Intariamira, in the late hours of April the 6th, 1994. This incident broke the truce between the armed forces of the Rwandan Patriotic Front, known as the RPF, and the government of Rwanda. Violence broke out at a scale never seen before and tore the country apart for 100 days. The rate of killing is estimated to be almost four times greater than that at the height of the Nazi Holocaust. Hutu people directed everyone to destroy the Tutsi as they unsuccessfully tried to flee the cities in Rwanda. About 200,000 people are estimated to be perpetrators in the Rwandan genocide. It also involved systematic rapes and killing of a small number of Hutus who opposed the violence, in addition to the Tutsi who were the main target of the program. This 100-day genocide saw an end when the RPF, which was Tutsi-led, defeated the Hutu and Paul Kagame took control as the president of Rwanda. An interesting uh, aside to this was the establishment of the tribunal. The International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda was born on the 8th of November 1994. The United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution, Resolution 955 of 1994, which established, open quote, an international tribunal for the sole purpose of prosecuting persons responsible for genocide and other serious violations of international humanitarian law committed in the territory of Rwanda and Rwandan citizens responsible for genocide and other such violations committed in the territory of neighboring states between the 1st of January 1994 and 31st December 1994. Close quotes. What is the importance of this tribunal and why do we study it as a special case? Since its inception, the tribunal has indicted at least 93 individuals whom it considered most responsible for serious violations of international humanitarian law committed in Rwanda in 1994. The ICTR is the first ever international tribunal to deliver verdicts in relation to genocide. It is the first international tribunal to interpret the definition of genocide set forth in Raphael Lemkin's 1945 Genocide Convention. It is also the first international tribunal to define rape as a war crime in international criminal law and to recognize rape as a means of perpetrating war crimes. The ICTR became the first international tribunal to hold members of the media responsible for broadcasts intended to inflame public opinion and incite them to genocide. From a pool of about 18 judges, a total of nine ad litem judges served on the tribunal. This 
pool of 18 judges was created on the 14th of August 2002 to expedite the judicial process and was done through Security Council Resolution 1431 of 2002. The ICTR delivered its last decision on the 20th of December 2012 in the Ingira Batware case. After this, it transitioned to what is known as the transitioning mechanism. We will now discuss the second tribunal, which is the subject of this module. This is the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia, the so-called ICTY. The ICTY was created by yet another Security Council resolution in 1993. Initially, it was praised as a revival of Nuremberg as it was established 47 years after the Nuremberg judgments were rendered. Since its establishment in 1993, it has irreversibly changed the landscape of international criminal law and provided victims an opportunity to voice the horrors they witnessed and experienced in the course of the Yugoslav genocide. Let us talk a little bit about the story behind the origin of this tribunal. War started in Croatia and Bosnia when the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia broke up into six independent states. Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina declared their independence in 1991, followed by Macedonia in 1992. Serbian military and paramilitary forces started a war when Croatia declared independence in June 1991 in order to protect the Serb minority. Another conflict similarly connected to ethnic origins began in newly independent Bosnia-Herzegovina in April 1992, where a strong Serb minority was determined to remain within a united Yugoslavia and to further the vision of building what is known as a greater Serbia. In central Bosnia, another war opposed Muslim forces of Bosnian Serb army, the so-called Bosniaks, who wanted to form part of a greater Croatia. It was a causal chain which led to many internal conflicts and the creation of a new state, Kosovo, which declared its political institutions independent from Serbia in February 2008. These wars caused approximately 100,000 civilian, civilians' lives and military casualties. Over 2 million refugees and internally displaced persons were created during the period between April 1992 and November 2005. This resulted in the establishment of the tribunal. There was a global outrage in response to the reports that flowed in of the horrendous crimes in Croatia and Bosnia. The reaction of the global media as well as civil society urged the Security Council to act quickly. The reports depicted macabre crimes in which civilians were being killed in thousands, sexually abused in detention camps, wounded and expelled from their homes. The Security Council had to pass a resolution on the matter before further damage could be done. However, it had already escalated into a full-blown genocide. The Statute of the International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia was adopted by Resolution 827 on 25th May 1993 and was amended by the Security Council seven times between 98 and 2006. What is the key objective of the ICTY? Similar to the ICTR, its key objective is to try those individuals who are most responsible for the most appalling acts such as murder, torture, rape, enslavement, destruction of private property and public property and other crimes listed in the tribunal statute. By bringing these perpetrators to trial, the ICTY's aim was to deter future crimes and to render justice to thousands of victims and their families, thus contributing to a more lasting peace in the territory of former Yugoslavia. Situated in The Hague in the Netherlands, the trial as well as the appeal chambers of the ICTY have charged over 160 persons in over 25 years of the tribunal's existence. The aim of the ICTY was to achieve this by concentrating on the prosecution and trial 
of the most senior leaders while referring a certain number of cases involving intermediate and slightly lower ranking accused to national courts in the former Yugoslavia. This plan commonly referred to as the tribunal's completion strategy foresees that the tribunal will assist in strengthening the capacity building of national courts in the region to handle their own war crimes cases. This is extremely important because historically the genocide belongs to Yugoslavia. Why do we say that the tribunal irrevocably changed the landscape of international humanitarian law? This tribunal whose seat is in The Hague consists of three organs, the chambers, the prosecution and the registry. The chambers originally composed of 11 independent judges of different nationalities serving in two trial chambers and one appeals chamber. Uh, the appeals chamber consists of seven permanent judges, five from the permanent uh, judges of the ICTY and two from the 11 permanent members of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. This creates an interesting synergy and synthesis between the two tribunals. However, when the work of the two tribunals ended, it had to segue to something new and therefore the newest creature was born. This is known as the MICT or the UNMICT. The expansion of this acronym is the Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals. This was established by a resolution of the United Nations Security Council for the sole purpose of carrying out a number of core or essential functions of the ICTR and the ICTY after the completion of their mandates. It therefore followed the end of the completion strategy of the ICTR and ICTY. The MICT was established in December 2010. The formation of the MICT or the mechanism as it is called was a key factor in determining the completion strategies of the two independent tribunals. It was visualized as a temporary body to look into the matters of jurisdiction, rights and obligations and essential functions under the resolution 1966 of the ICTR and ICTY. What are the branches of the MICT? The MICT comprises the following um, sub bodies. One covers the functions inherited from the ICTR and its seat is in Arusha, Tanzania, exactly where the ICTR was. That has been functioning since the 1st of July 2012. The other branch is located in The Hague and carries out the inherited functions from the ICTY. This started functioning since July 2013. The initial days of the MICT saw a temporal overlap between the work of the mechanism and that of the ICTR and the ICTY. A third strain was also included, the so-called transitioning mechanism. The ICTR and the ICTY completed their outstanding works, ongoing trials and appeal proceedings, which were pending on the date of the functioning of the two branches of the MICT. Resolution 1966 of the United Nations Security Council envisages that the mechanism's functions and size will diminish over time with a small number of staff commensurate with its reduced functions. But the Security Council determined that the mechanism would continue to operate until a further decision or order was taken, provided that it will be renewed in 2016 and reviewed every two years after that. The idea of carrying it in perpetuity was that the MICT also inherited an important function from the ICTR, that of serving as a historic archive of the genocide. In the course of its functioning, the MICT is responsible for securing the arrest, transfer and prosecution of nine remaining fugitives who are still wanted for trial by the ICTR. The tracking and the prosecution of the remaining fugitives of the ICTY may be conducted in synergy between the two branches of the MICT. Retrials may be ordered by the mechanism's appeals chamber and these will be carried out by the MICT. 
the MICT has the jurisdiction to conduct investigation, hold trials and retrials, and look into appeals in cases of contempt of court and false testimony committed in the course of proceedings before the MICT. The mechanism will further have the jurisdiction to conduct review proceedings arising from its own decisions and shall also have residual jurisdiction to conduct review proceedings of both the ICTR and the ICTY judgments where the application for review is filed on or after the start date of the respective branch of the MICT. Now this sounds very complicated but the MICT essentially is a residual functioning mechanism of the ICTR and the ICTY. There are continuing functions of the mechanism which involve protection of victims and witnesses, supervision of the enforcement of sentences, assistance to national jurisdictions and prevention and management um, of abuse by state governments of the archives of the ICTR and ICTY. Organizationally speaking, the mechanism has three permanent members that is the president, the registrar and the prosecutor. Similar to the tribunals, the mechanism also lacks a defense. A roster of 25 independent judges cover both the ICTR and ICTY branches of the MICT. By establishing the MICT, the Security Council has helped to guarantee that the closure of the two pioneering ad hoc tribunals does not open the way for impunity to reign once more. These were the concluding words of President Theodore Meron of the UN Security Council on 7th July 2012. In conclusion, in this module, we have looked at the two most important tribunals, the ICTR and the ICTY, and what they segued into, that is the MICT. The ICTR has completed over 20 years of its existence and it wound up the justice project in Arusha in 2015. Parallel processes of the creation of the United Nations Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals, the monitoring mechanism which governs the transfer of cases to Rwanda, as well as the transitioning mechanism have accompanied this end to impunity. Slowly but surely, the legacy of the ICTR is doing the rounds at the history clubs of international law. And the buzzing question is whether the work of the court has had an impact on the regional development of a rule of law in the same way as it was widely held as the failure of the United Nations collective security system to intervene in the Rwandan genocide of 1994, which led to the destabilization of the rule of law framework in the entire Great Lakes region. The same question may be asked of the ICTY when it wound up in December 2015, when following a mandate of the Security Council, the ICTY was scheduled to wind up its operation and make way for the setting up of a Hague seat for the, the mechanism. The idea of impunity has been eroded in turn by the creation of international criminal tribunals, from the creation of the ad hoc tribunals to prosecute those most responsible for the atrocities committed in the former territories of Rwanda and Yugoslavia, as well as atrocities committed across the world in other genocides. The project now is to create an enduring and permanent archive that chronicles the end of the impunity and to enshrine the legacy of the two tribunals. The mechanism has the responsibility inherited from the true tribunals to serve as the permanent home of the records created by the trials before the ICTR and the ICTY. You might wonder why the history of genocide that was born in Rwanda and Yugoslavia is being usurped by the MICT and this is a good question. In the coming modules we will think about what does it mean to own your history and what does it mean to accept that genocide took place in a region and that the archives of that region should belong to the people of that region.